Hi crochet friends, this is Susan Lohman, the Crochet Architect. I've got a special stitch today to teach you called the Thermal Stitch. It's nice and thick and makes great pot holders. So let's get started. This is the project that I'm going to teach you today with the Thermal Stitch. And this is a pot holder that I've made. You can see that it's nice and thick. That's the beauty of the thermal stitch. You can see on the side here that there are the wrong side of the single crochets. Lots of rows of single crochet and these are all wrong sides of these stitches. And you would think that the other side would be right sides, but it's also the wrong side of the stitches. So how do we do that? Let me show you. So these are the two supplies that you're going to need to make this pot holder. You're going to need an H8 five millimeter hook, any kind, whatever your favorite one is, and worsted weight cotton yarn. And I can't stress cotton enough because acrylic will melt when it gets next to heat. So pot holders need cotton yarn. So to start this pot holder, we're going to work 26 chains. And we don't want them too loose or too tight, just a regular gauge. And we're going to work our first row the same way as we usually do. You can insert your hook under one loop or of each chain or two loops. You can go in the back loop, whatever your favorite method is of working row one. So we're just going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each of the remaining chains across. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about this thermal stitch while I'm doing this. I actually learned this stitch at a CGOA conference in 2008 from Darla Fanton. And I was really excited about learning the stitch and it was really fun to do, but then life got in the way and I never really followed up on it. And then years later, a friend of mine at a crochet meeting showed me this nice thick pot holder that she had made from this free pattern. And I said, wow, how do you do that? So she showed me and I've been making these pot holders ever since. This is a really fun, easy pattern. You don't have to think about it while you're crocheting because you're just inserting your hook and working a single crochet in each stitch across. So you can even talk, you can watch movies, you can do all kinds of things while you're making these projects and you don't have to have all of your attention on them. So the pattern for this pot holder is a free pattern that my friend showed me from the internet and I've included a link in the video description below for it. So go ahead and download that pattern if you'd like to, or you can just follow along in the video, or both. And we're getting close to the end here. We're going to have 25 single crochet in this row and every row. And when you're working this pot holder, you want to make sure that your stitches aren't too loose. You also want to make sure they're not too tight because sometimes I crochet too tightly and in a f an hour or two after crocheting, I get this really stiff part of my thumb down here and I have to work it out. And I think, yeah, I've been crocheting too tightly again. So anyway, watch your gauge and your tightness of your stitches so they're not too tight or too loose you'll find the rhythm and the, um, the tension that works best for you. So we've got a single crochet in the last chain here, and we should have our 25 single crochet across. Now you can see this is the front of our single crochets and this is the back. And that's our first row, which is just like regular crochet. But now we're gonna start doing the thermal stitch. So we're going to chain one and turn our work. But we're going to actually look 
at this part of it on the back because we need to find the back loop of our first stitch. We're going to skip our chain and instead of inserting our hook under both loops, front and back of our stitches, we're going to insert our hook in the back loop of this stitch and then we're going to insert our hook in the unused loop or loops of our foundation chain below. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops to start our single crochet and we'll yarn over and finish our single crochet. And that's where our first stitch is. So we've worked in this stitch and we're going to insert our hook in the next stitch for our second single crochet. So we're working under that back loop and we find the stitch below. Now we want to always make sure that we're going into the same stitch below. We don't want to go over to the left or the right one because then we won't be lining up our stitches. So insert our hook and into that free loop of that foundation chain and pull up a loop and yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. And this is how we work our thermal stitch. We insert our hook in that back loop and into the free loop of the foundation chain below and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. And as you can see, we're not really looking at the back side of our work. We're looking at the other side where we can find our loops to insert our hook. So this is what starts our project in the thermal stitch and makes it nice and thick. And we're going to work one single crochet into each of those stitches across. We work our single crochet the same, but we're inserting our hook under the back loop of the stitch because we would normally be looking at the back side of it and into the free loop of the foundation chain in the stitch below. And we work one single crochet in each stitch across just like this and I'll do that and I'll meet you at the end of the row. Okay, as you can see, I've gotten to the end here and I have two stitches left. So this is my next to last stitch. There's the back of it. Here's my back loop and here's my free loop of the chain below. So I'm going to work my next to last single crochet there. And this is my last stitch. And you always want to make sure you don't skip your first or last stitch so that you have the same stitch count. But otherwise, it's pretty easy going across the whole row. And there's that last stitch. So we have our first two rows. And you can see here's the back side of those single crochets. And here's the back side of these single crochets. So these rows are kind of staggered a little bit. And we're done with row two and we're ready to start row three. So we'll yarn over and turn our work a little bit. We're not going to look at this side, but we're going to look at the space in between. So here's our chain. We're going to work our first single crochet on row three into the back loop of our stitch on the previous row and into that free front loop of the stitch on the first row. So that's where we have our free loops now on the row before our previous row. So there's our first single crochet in thermal stitch. And we don't want to go in here because we've already worked in there. So our next stitch is over here. This is our back loop. Remember, we would normally be looking at this side. So this is our front loop. This is our back loop. And here is the free loop in the row below. So we'll insert our hook there and draw up a loop and yarn over and draw through two loops. And that is how we do all of the other rows after rows one and two of thermal stitch. So we do one single crochet in the back loop and the free loop in 
one single crochet in each stitch across. So I will finish this row and meet you at the end. Okay, here I am at the end of row three. I have three stitches left. So let's go ahead and do those three. So we make sure that we end our row completely without skipping any. So those two stitches line up. There's that back loop and the free loop in the row below. Those two line up. And then here's my last stitch here. Here's my back loop and my free loop. So that's the last stitch in this row. And I should have 25 stitches across, all single crochet. And row three is what you're going to repeat over and over until your piece is square. Okay, I've done a bunch of rows on here and I know my piece is square because when I fold the corners together, I have the same length on each side. So I'm ready to do my last row. And I like to do the hanging loop at the top edge. So my last row is going to include the hanging loop. I like to do nine chains, but you can make your hanging loop as long as you like or as short as you like. And that's about nine, might be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll do one more. Okay. So this is going to be our hanging loop. And now we're going to turn for our last row. And the last row is done similarly to the other rows, except we're going to be working slip stitches instead of single crochets. So I want to insert my hook in that back loop of the first stitch and in the unused loop of the stitch below in the row below, yarn over, pull through those loops and my loop on the hook. So there's a slip stitch and there's my hanging loop. And we're going to work a slip stitch in each set of stitches across until we get to the end. We're always inserting in the back loop and in that unused loop in the row below. And we always want to make sure that our stitches are lined up. We don't want to skip any at the beginning or the end or the middle. So I will meet you when I get to the end of this row. Okay, I've gotten to the end and I have two stitches left. So I wanna go in the back loop and the unused loop, that next to last stitch and do a slip stitch. And here's that last stitch. So this is the back loop right here, this blue one. And here's the unused loop of the stitch in the row below. And that's my last slip stitch. Then I'm going to finish off this project and I'm going to leave a nice long tail to weave in. I don't want a short tail because then the tail could come out later on. And that is thermal stitch pot holder. I wanted to give you some ideas at the end of this video ways that you can experiment with this thermal stitch and make your pot holders unique. Now, as you can see, these two pot holders are just the one skein of yarn. This was a solid and this was the variegated. But this pot holder has both of those in it. I used the solid from here and the variegated from here. And these were actually the scraps of yarn that I had left over after making these two pot holders. So don't throw out your scraps. Make a nice scrap pot holder that works just as well and it's just as nice and thick as the other ones. Another thing I'd like to show you is how you can experiment with the same yarn using this stitch. This yarn has five colors, including the white. And with this number of stitches, which I believe was the 25 that I had shown you already, this is the pattern that came out with the gauge that I was using that day. When I changed it up and did a different number of stitches, this is what happened to the pattern in the yarn. It went diagonally. And all that was, was a different number of stitches across, a different number of rows, and a little bit looser gauge than this one. You can't feel it, but this one is a lot looser than this one. They're still both double thick and will protect your hands from hot dishes from the oven. 
Now I changed up the number of stitches again and my gauge. This one feels a little bit tighter than this one and I got a little bit wider stripes. And then this one was a different number of stitches again and another different gauge and it started doing this and then it nice went nice and straight up. So those are some fun things you can do with the same type of yarn just by changing your gauge and the number of stitches and the number of rows. So have fun with that. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is you can make little coasters out of your project instead of pot holders. These smaller coasters here are 13 stitches across and however many rows high to make them square. And you can see that I've used three different yarns here. So these are scrap coasters. These coasters are a little bit larger and none of them is scraps, but instead of making a pot holder or two with your skein of yarn, you can make a set of four coasters. I hope you've enjoyed learning the thermal stitch and that you'll give this pot holder a try. Don't forget to download the free pattern with the link in the video description below. And also in the description, I've included information on the finished measurements and the weights of the pot holders and the coasters. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more crochet videos. Thanks so much for watching and happy thermal stitch crocheting to you. Please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for having <laughs> Almost. Almost. <laughs> I have to start all over. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh. Thanks so much for watching and happy. Yeah. Thermal stitch crocheting to you. <laughs> you, you need to start all over. Oh, like come a, on. Like starting Good outtakes, out. though. <laughs> Just, it's like 30 seconds. Uh. Just do it. Yeah, that's easy for you to say on the other side of the camera. <laughs>